Welcome, and in this video course, we are looking at the CyberOps Associate Version 1 course. This course is going to cover the skills and knowledge needed for successfully handling the tasks and duties, responsibilities of an associate level security analyst working at a security operations center. The goal of this video series is to help prepare learners for the Cisco 200-201 certification. That's focusing on understanding the Cisco Cybersecurity Operation Fundamentals course, known as CBROPS. Module 20, Threat Intelligence. This module, we're looking at sources of information and we're gonna start describing the Threat Intelligence Service. All right, so let's jump right on in. Information sources. So to effectively protect a network, we have to understand and be informed about what threats and what vulnerabilities are out there that might apply to our environment. One of the big things is our environment is unique. However, us using a Cisco firewall or us using a Sonic wall or us using a PFSense firewall, those aren't unique. That's, those are security appliances that organizations use. So we can start looking to see what vulnerabilities are out there targeting the hardware that our environment deploys. So there are many security organizations which provide intelligence, resources, workshops, and conferences to help individuals understand how to better secure their environment. To remain effective, you must understand what are the current threats. This will subscribe to real-time feeds regarding threats, routinely uh, pursuing security-related websites, reading blogs, staying uh, current on current attacks. This also means upgrading skills, in, uh, attending conferences, attending workshops, attending training, things like that. It's important to understand that network security is a very steep learning curve and does require a commitment to continual development. That means there is no easy day. Organizations such as SANS, uh, they provide a large amount of free resources. They also provide a ton of expensive, expensive training. With SANS, you can learn just about everything. However, you're looking at like a five to $10,000 um, cost USD per training course. So there's some, some challenges there. Military is another one. This is a corporation that maintains a CVE list. So CVE is Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures. Every vulnerability that is known is actually given a CVE number. And that way you can look to see what hardware you have and what CVEs are targeting against your hardware. You can then see common exploits and you can see if there's remediation actions, ways to protect yourself. Other organizations are things like Center for Internet Security, CIS. Uh, there are providers like ISC Squared that does training. Secure News Wire or Forms for Incident Response and Security Team is also known as FIRST. Again, different organizations that provide different functionality. Some of them are training, some of them are just blogs, some of them are letting you know current news uh, about things that are happening. Cisco also has a security report. These are resources to help professionals stay abreast of What's going on? Normally, this is mid-year reports. Every six months, it produces a new report. These reports provide an update of the state of security, preparedness, expert uh, analysts, and top vulnerabilities. They factor in uh, behind explosions of attacks using adware, ransomware, other malware, and so forth. Typically, a cybersecurity analyst should subscribe, whether it be this report or Verizon's uh, yearly report or any other major security company's report to learn how current threats are targeting organizations 
and what uh, people can do to mitigate them. Attacks can be also um, learned through blogs and podcasts. Again, there's tiny professional, tons of professionals out there, tons, that do research blog, blogs and podcasts. That way you understand recommended re- uh, mediation for certain types of attacks. So that outlines a lot of intelligence sources. Next we have our intelligence services. Cisco has TELUS. This is going to be one of the larger commercial threat intelligence teams in the world and is comprised of world-class researchers and analysts and engineers. TELUS provides free software, services and resources, uh, data and maintains security incident detection rules through like SNORT and ClaimAV and SpamCop and so forth. They help alleviate, they help pinpoint types of attacks, locations, where they're going, but there is a cost to them. FireEye is another security company that offers services uh, pretty similar. They use a three-prong approach combining security intelligence, expertise, and technology. FireEye also offers a SIM and SOAR with built-in additive uh, options. Again, the FireEye security system will block attacks across the uh, web and email-based platforms. It also has a anti-malware built into their anti-email threat uh, platform. It blocks advanced malware and easily bypasses traditional signatures when looking at inbound-based attacks. It does address all stages of an attack lifecycle with a signature-less engine utilizing stateful attack analysis to detect zero-day threats. Basically, it's another cells device, it's another appliance that does deeper level scanning, and again, it costs money. We have an automatic uh, indicator share, AIS. This is a free service offered by the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, DHS. It enables real-time exchange for cyber threat uh, indicators between federal and private sector individuals. AIS does create an ecosystem when a threat is recognized. Later, it can be immediately shared with the community. Essentially, it helps build a network so that if you are compromised, you can share that with everyone else. That way, lessons learned are a little bit more immediately. We talked about the CVE database. Well, CVE indicators are, again, publicly known cybersecurity uh, vulnerabilities that cybersecurity professionals can look through. So if you know you're running Windows Server 2016, you can use CVE searches to see what CVEs are targeting that platform. For the more threat intelligence sharing standards, there are three main ones, Cybox, Taxi, and Structured, or Styx. Styx is the Structured Threat Information Expression. This is a set of specification for exchanging cyber threat information between organizations. Taxi is the Trusted Automated Exchange of Indicators and Information. This is a specification for an application layer protocol, something that does over HTTPS and it uses CTI. Basically, Taxi is designed to support sticks. And then we have Cybox. This is a set of standard schema for specifying, capturing, and characterizing communication events, properties of a network, operations, and support that cybersecurity functions can occur. Essentially, these are the tools used to share intelligence about a upcoming or current cyber threats that our organization is dealing with. Malware Information Platform, MISP, is an open source platform uh, sharing IOCs for newly discovered threats. Again, as a threats are coming out daily, so the ability to share information with legitimate organizations becomes paramount. The sooner that other organizations know about current malware, the sooner they can start being prepared to defend against them or find ways to detect and mitigate them. So MIPS support uh, by the uh, EU 
and is used by several organizations globally. MIPS enable automatic sharing of IOCs between people and machines by using sticks and other exportable format, but six is one of the more common ones. So threat intelligence platforms, TIPS, or TIP, basically allows centralized collection of threat data to be shared with other people. Types of threat intelligence data. I love how they brought up the acronym IOCs, but they didn't talk about it yet. IOCs are indicators of compromise. We have tool techniques and procedures and reputation information about internet destinations or domains. Those are the big three types of threat intelligence data. Again, here the goal is when a compromise occurs, if there's data collected, the ability to share with both government and other private sector legitimate users so that they can better defend against them. One organization actually does say honeypots are a good way to help mitigate this and to collect data. But again, these are not going to be done with small organizations. These will be fairly large organizations that are deploying this. Or, uh, organizations can contribute to the threat intelligence uh, gathering by sharing intrusion data over the internet. Again, large organizations are going to be doing this. Mom and pop probably are not. So this is chapter in a nutshell. We learned about training organizations. We learned about CVEs and different automated tools for sharing IOCs. That's all I had for this chapter. Questions or concerns, please reach out. Thank you.